Hi, I'm Kitsune Fuzzy and recently I took a few days of my life to remake World 1-1 from the original Super Mario Bros. in 3D. But I wanted it to be based on the original concept and box art of the game to give it a slight breeze of cursed. And this video is about the process of how I got there. If you enjoy this kind of video, hit the like and subscribe buttons to let me know that I should make more videos like this one. What I wanted to do first is to build a ground block generator with slight irregularities so it doesn't look too flat and uniform. For that I used Blender's geometry nodes and connected the noodles in a way that I can scale the number of blocks in any direction as well as a slight offset and rotation. Then I created a new Unreal Engine project, obviously, and imported the blend file using a plugin called Altar Mesh that lets me use geometry nodes directly in Unreal Engine. And everything seemed to work fine so far. Next, I sculpted a basic floor block in ZBrush, just a basic cube with a bit of detail here and there. Then I sent over a high and low poly version to Blender to create a UV map for the block, save those two blocks and paint them in Substance Painter. I decided to check on the Quixel Minkascans database to see if they had any good rock or clay surfaces that would work for this block and go from there. Back in Unreal I noticed the floor generator has some sort of issue, the solution took me far longer than it should have to figure out. It was just that the pivot point, the point where the object rotates around, was not in the center of the block. With that problem solved, we've literally laid the foundation for this project. Now removing the starter content and we're good to go! Next I wanted to add some dirt or grass texture on the blocks with vertex painting for some more variation. So I adjusted the material for it and picked up a texture for that, uh, but it turns out that Unreal Engine's Nanite system does not support vertex paint at this moment. So I went on to start with the man himself, Mr. Super Mario Mario. For him I made a really rough sculpt in ZBrush, just to get the general shape of him. I sent that model over to Blender to retopologize it to then have an easier time adjusting the overall form. I had a bit of a rough time with his hands, but in the end they seem to come out okay. Next were his head, cat and hair. Uh, no major problems here and I think it turned out alright. With the mesh done, it was again time for everyone's second favorite task, UV mapping. And with the UV maps done, I sent him over to Substance Painter to slap some color onto him. In his classic old school color scheme of course. That means he's getting red overalls and a blue shirt instead of his modern blue overalls and red shirt. I noticed I needed to make some small adjustments to the face mesh, uh, so I did that and continued texturing. Now it was time for some bones and rigging so we can pose and animate them. I used the Auto Rig Pro add-on for Blender to get a nice control rig. I also tried getting in a face rig but decided against it as it didn't seem worth the effort for the scale of this project. Alright, looking good so far. 
I then imported the model into Unreal and wanted to see if maybe I could retarget the existing animations from the Unreal Engine mannequin to Mario. And oh, oh no, that did not work at all. Well, that means we get to make our own animations early, starting with an idle animation. Sometime during this I noticed that the painted shadows on the model looked a little off and I made some quick adjustments. And after some time we now have our own Mario model idling in Unreal Engine. The next step was making a walk and a run cycle as well as a jump pose to get the basic animations ready for a very basic character controller. Then I set up the input as needed in Unreal Engine. With that out of the way, I did the first bits of scripting. I used the character state machine that I built a while back, and explaining that one in more detail would probably make the video way too long. And we have our base movement of walking, running and jumping! Now, for something a little more relaxing and easy, I created the hills for the background. And they were just a simple tapered cube, subdivided, smooth, with a few black spots on it, and they were done! And after that I did the coins. I started from a circle, made them a little longer, and gave them some depth. And in the old games they seem to have a bump, where in modern games they decided to make the center thing a dent. Then I give them a slightly shimmering material and the scripting comes a little later. I then added a UI so we can see the count for the coins we collect and it turns out a scaling UI where variables change um, are performing terrible and that's good to know. I also added the UI as a variable to the game instance, so we can change points and coins from pretty much everywhere. Now it was time to add functionality to the coins, and voila! We can collect coins now! Isn't that great? For the brick blocks it was the usual, uh, creating the base mesh. Adding details on the ZBrush. Creating UV maps. And then finally texturing the block. I then added a reference image of World 1-1 to the level so that I know where to place the blocks um, going forward. After getting some comments that the camera movement looked too stiff, I ripped apart Unreal's default character controller setup and separated the camera from the moving player, so that I could move it independently and give it some look ahead movement and smoothing, but only on the horizontal axis. Now I wanted to make the brick blocks actually destructible using Unreal's Chaos Destruction and Physics. And oh boy was this a mess. At first I wanted to attach the break forces as a child actor to the brick blocks and activate them when I hit the block. Sounds simple. But for some reason Unreal did not want to do this. My solution to this was spawning the force actor on begin play and keep a reference to them. So I then can activate the thing and that finally worked. I also added some smoke particles I had lying around and we had breakable brick blocks. Next I wanted to add the bases for power-ups, 
so I made a Fire Mario texture that at this point was not correct and I changed it later. And I added three dummies, one to take damage, one to become Big Mario and one to become Fire Mario. With the system in place I now needed to add the models, so I quickly made a mushroom based on the official artwork of course. And what I assume is supposed to be the fire flower, which I also gave a little wiggle animation. What I wanted to do next is building the general floor with what we have for the whole level. Then also add some brick blocks. I also added invisible walls to the sides, so you couldn't just jump down there by accident. And I placed a few more hills in the background and it started to look like we're getting somewhere. Next I decided to model and texture the pipes. They were fairly simple and straightforward. And after taking a look at the level I felt like it needed more space, so I made it twice as wide. And then I placed pipes throughout the level. I took a quick detour to model the small background bushes. I made a simple base shape, modeled three leaves and used Blender's hair system to place the leaves on the mesh. Then I just placed the bushes uh, around the level. Then I created animations for Mario for entering and exiting horizontal and vertical pipes. And with all that ready, I programmed the functionality in and we had working pipes! Hooray! I hope you like blocks, because that's what we're gonna take care of next. First I made one of these used item blocks. So that I then can make brick blocks that hold coins and items. Works! Perfect! From there I went on to make the question mark blocks. I could just use the use blocks as a base for them and slap a question mark on them. Then make a child copy of the coin brick block we just made and swap the mesh and that's done. And with the new blocks done I place them around the level as needed. Wonderful! Next I wanted to start building the underground area, which in my case is actually more of a sky area, you will see. I made an inverted box so I could have a dark and visually cut off area and place it high up in the sky where the player should not be able to see it. Then I color shifted the block textures for the room and filled the room with coins and blocks. We have pipes already working, so I linked them to and from the room back outside. Since there was still skylight coming in, I made the black box material two-sided, and so that it's not too dark in there, I placed a light in the room. It was now that I noticed my unforgivable mistake with the Fire Mario textures, and I quickly fixed that. Next stop, power-ups, again. I wanted to give them, or at least the mushrooms, their left and right movement. After a few uh, smaller hiccups, I also made them spawnable from blocks. For that I duplicated the coin block and modified them to spawn items. Worked good enough for now. I did most of the smaller cleanup, uh, barely worth mentioning, near the very end of the project.
I then felt like making another block to fill the level a little more. So a quick new model, textures, imported into Unreal and I built the stairs of the level with them. We could already spawn and collect power-ups, so I thought adding one-ups to the game would be a nice and easy next step. Then adding a life count to the game instance as well as a one-up UI text that pops up when you collect a mushroom. And after just a bit of tinkering, it worked! Phew, so far so good. Now I finally wanted to actually implement the fire flower power. So I made a fireball model with an inverted outer shell and an inner hot core. Colored it and made it emissive. This meant I also needed a new animation for Mario, so I quickly threw together a very short throw animation. A bit of coding and things didn't want to work right just yet. So a bit more of fixing things was needed. I also added some smoke and fire particles into the mix and the point light and I have to say I really like the way it came out. Next I started with the point system. I could basically copy most of the one-up system for that the pop-ups that show up with the score and adding score to the game instance. It was finally time to add the first enemy to the game. And of course, Goombas get to be our first punching bags. So the usual spiel, model, texturing, all the required animations like walking, getting stomped on, and getting hit by other things like fireball, power star, shells or whatever. Now a bit of script to give them LIFE, so we can later take it again. Didn't work as expected the first time around, but oh uh, well. Do you like power? Cause I do. So I started working on power stars. Or is it Starman or Superstars? Anyway, made the model, threw it in Unreal, gave Mario the ability to collect them and expanded his material with the shiny rainbow effect, which I could control over material parameters. I then noticed that enemies even to the far end of the level were just moving down pits before I even got close to them. So I gave them an activity radius, so that only when Mario is close enough to them, they start moving. Kind of like how they were not moving when they are not on screen in the 2D games. I felt like the star power could use a bit more pizzazz, and I added sparkling star particle effects to the star and Mario, and for Mario I also added some rainbow dust clouds. And it worked after a bit of fighting with Unreal's Niagara particle system in C++. Also, enemies could die, but we couldn't yet. So it was time for us to be able to meet our ends. At first I made an animation similar to the Goombas hit one, where they fall back, but that looked terrible. So I just made it a simple up-down movement in the end. And yeah, that looked better, at least in my opinion. Did you know there is a single Koopa in World 1-1 in Super Mario Bros? That means I will have to add him. Now that means making a model of him, sculpting him, retopologizing him, UV mapping him, adding detail, texture painting him, Rigging and skinning him, animating him, scripting him for one single Koopa. <sighs> well, so I did all that. With this unusual design, of course, undeniable by the checkered pattern on a shell. And with that done, you could even farm one ups with him. And now it's time for the home stretch. I quickly built a flagpole, at least that model was easy to make. 
Edit a pose for Mario when sliding down the pole. And struggle with the point system depending on the height you jump at the pole, because at that point my brain was literally putting. Anyway, in the end I figured it out and the flag pole was working. One thing left is a castle. So I made one and wasn't happy with it. Then I made another one, also not good. Third time's the charm and I accepted what I have made. A bit of camera movement following Mario into the castle entrance and done. Oh, and I quickly slapped on that black splash screen showing you the number of lights you have and added trigger volumes to change the background music when you go underground or back out. And now we're really done! Let's have a look at it in all its glory! I hope you had fun watching this video and if you did please leave a like and subscribe. If I went over some things too fast or spent too long on something else please let me know down below in the comments. But I had to cut down about 85 hours of video material to a reasonably long YouTube video. I probably can't release this as a playable game because I don't want to upset the big N ninjas. Well that's it, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again sometime, bye!